Affordable Care Act heads back to the Supreme Court tomorrow. Two years after upholding the ACA's individual mandate, the justices will hear challenges to the law's contraception coverage requirement. It's a case that pits religious freedom against public health. Hobby Lobby is a national chain of arts and crafts stores that adheres to the Christian principles of its founder, David Green. The company says a threat to those principles led it to file suit against the Affordable Care Act because the law mandates coverage of emergency contraception. Hobby Lobby's attorneys say the use of any drugs or procedures that end human life after conception violate Green's beliefs. The central question before the court is whether a 1993 federal law protecting religious nonprofits also applies to for profit corporations. The court is expected to issue a ruling by late June. My next guest filed an amicus brief in this case supporting the Obama administration's position. Kent Greenfield is a professor at Boston College Law School and a constitutional law expert. Thanks for joining us. Great Ken. to be here. Let me ask you this. Uh, you said in an op-ed piece that you think Hobby Lobby should lose. Why? I think they should lose because if they win, it will open the floodgates to a lot of bad things happening down the road, including, I mean, we've got to remember that a lot of the, uh, people hold very sincere religious beliefs on a lot of things. Segregation, for example, back in the 50s and 60s were justi was justified in part by relig certain people's religious beliefs. So if Hobby Lobby wins on this, you can imagine uh, companies saying, well, we can discriminate on the basis of race or sexual orientation or religion. You also feel that it would give them an unfair corporate advantage. I do. I, so any, any time that you give a, one corporation an exemption from regulation and don't give it to others, then the one getting the exemption is going to have an advantage. So you're going to have companies that, are, that perhaps could be uh, puffing up their beliefs in order to get regulatory advantages and, and get an advantage in the marketplace. Hobby Lobby is very open about adhering to religious principles. They have a sign that says closed Sunday to allow employees time for family and worship. Is there any doubt here about the sincerity of their religious beliefs? No, there's not. And it's very clear that the, that the family who owns this company, the Greens, are very devout uh, Christians. And, and let's remember that there's, uh, there's, uh, there's another company involved, too, that's owned by a Mennonite family, the Conestoga Wood Specialties Corporation, also being heard tomorrow. So the, really the question, there's no question about their sincerity of belief. Um, but the but the problem with granting their uh, uh, exemption in the corporate form is, like I said before, is that it will open floodgates to all kinds of claims. The concept is that corporations, unlike people, cannot have consciences. That's that's right. Right. The 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 protection that we hold dear in American constitutional law for religious exercise really is about uh, the religious exercise of human beings. And corporations are not persons and should not have this kind of right. It just doesn't make sense for a for-profit company to be claiming that they need to do something for religious beliefs. Hobby Lobby is basing their position or their argument on a 1993 federal law. Can you explain that? Right. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act, or RIFRA, it was passed in 1993 in answer to a Supreme Court case where the Supreme Court said, look, you know, laws that, that apply generally to everyone uh, mean, cannot, cannot uh, give rise to a claim of religious exercise. So the Congress said, wait, uh, we think that, uh, that when, when, a, when a federal law uh, burdens the religious exercise of people, the, the term in the act is persons, then uh, they sh the government has to show a compelling interest to do that. So the, really the question in, the, in the, the statutory question is whether the word persons in the act includes corporations. Uh, some people are arguing that uh, uh, the ruling in favor of Hobby Lobby would be a broad new right for corporations to make all, assert uh, all sorts of assertions. Uh, as you have indicated, but it, are those claims overblown, do you think? I don't think so. Think, think about the uh, millions of privately held corporations that are around us in the marketplace every day. I, whether you eat at a restaurant or, or, or uh, get your clothes cleaned at a dry cleaner, they're all organized as corporations. Now, if each corporation can pick and choose which regulation applies to them, whether they can serve Jews or, or gay people or African Americans, 
and have a religious exemption in order to claim that, then then really we are going to be uh, being able to carve out all kinds of regulatory exemptions, which would be dangerous. The the law, the ACA was up, upheld two years ago by right. one vote. Do, does that give you any indication of how the court might rule tomorrow? Well, the, it's it's going to be unusual and, and, and interesting to watch, right? Because the, the Supreme Court case that the RIFR was an answer to was written by Antonin Scalia. Mm -hmm. So if Antonin Scalia is consistent, that he will probably vote against Hobby Lobby in this case. So you don't, th this is a case that won't split liberals and conservatives in a traditional way. Kent Greenfield, professor at Boston College Law School, thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks for joining us.